actually at 2435 West 9th Avenue, which was on the southeastern part of the Sun Valley projects. Our best place to be was Rudy Recreation Center, which is on the northwest side of the projects, so it was the furthest distance. But when we seen the sun coming down, we knew we had to get back home before the sun went down. So it was, you know, all the kids walked outside, time to go home. We all went to our homes and uh, did the same thing the next day. Um, so we were all very close. We got to know the families. The Sun Valley was quite unique because we were, um, it seemed like 100 yards from what they called the Valley Highway when it first came. It was I-25. And then our, and we'd open up our back door, and I know you've seen the rush of the highway traffic all day, every day. The lights um, from our bedroom, second story bedroom window, you can see downtown Denver. You can see the beautiful skyline of Denver. I mean, we were so close, I and mean, we could just reach out and touch the skylines. We see, so we walk out. You can see the highway. You can see the downtown. But the Platte River, um, of course, we didn't know any difference. There was, you know, a lot of rats in there, and the, we, there was dumpsters on every four blocks of the of, a, of the area. So you know, we'd all take our trash out to the dumpsters. Um, but it was very clean. You you would. Uh, we had a, a maintenance shop right in the middle of, of the Sun Valley housing units, and I remember in the summertime, every every Friday, my mom would send me out there, and I would have to get a lawnmower, a rake, and shears. <laughs> and we would have a little orange card and with the permission you know, to bring these tools to our home because we were responsible for cutting our own grass and keeping our own areas mm -hmm. manicured and neat. And so in the summertime, it would, it would be freshly green grass, people watering the grass, and kids playing in the water. Um, you know, there was always a lot of music, I remember. Um, a lot of people playing music. Um, there was clotheslines, people hanging their clothes outside. There was probably at least three major playgrounds for children to play in, in those neighborhoods. So the playgrounds were full. And the funny thing about the playgrounds, I'll tell you this, is we didn't realize we were actually playing inside of what we see today as the, um, as the concrete... Um, what would they call them underneath? Uh, they were they were concrete barrels, mm -hmm. and under they did put those underground right now for the water to flow through. Oh, and uh, and they would just drop four of those down, and we would just jump from barrel to barrel. We didn't realize how dangerous those things actually were. We we've seen so many families come and go. I remember a white family from Alabama, um, you know, and, and most of our kids were minority children. We had a lot of Chicano kids, a lot of Mexican kids, black kids, a few black kids. Um, but we were mostly um, of that heritage. So when we see the white people coming in, it was kind of like, hey, where are you guys from? You're from Alabama. And, wow, that's pretty cool. They talk differently. They they were just different than we were, you know, in appearance, by the way, as children. So we were real interested in where they were coming to, coming to and uh, where are they going, where were they from. And they would, next thing you know, they would be gone. Um, so interestingly enough, um, you figure back in the early 70s, when Vietnam was finishing up, um, we had a ton of migrant Vietnam Vietnamese families moving into the Sun Valleys permanently. So we were kind of sitting down, I remember sitting down as children, like, wow, look at a lot of these Vietnamese people moving in. And you talk about a different culture change. Well, it was shocking. We had the, we had the Platte River, and as uh, kids, we would go and throw rocks at the fish, and we would you know, we didn't have fishing poles. We couldn't afford a fishing poles. We would just throw rocks at the fish mm -hmm. and throw rocks at the water rats. Well, we met a Vietnamese family one time, um, and they were they were crazy. They were crazy good fishermen. Um, there was a child one time my age. We were probably 15 years old, and he was squatting down. They had this weird squat next to the Platte River, and he had a Pepsi can with some fishing line on it, one hook, and they had a rock tied at the end of the line. He had some corn from the commodities that we were given to us, and he put corn. And he was pulling these fish out of the Platte River like a professional. We were like, <laughs> wow, it was, it was pretty neat how we learned something from that from that culture, how you know just to fish and how to you know overcome the adversity. We didn't have, we figured we don't have a pole, we're not going to go fishing. Well, you need a string, a hook, and a rock, mm -hmm. and a piece of corn, and we could go fishing as kids, and that was the coolest thing ever. Um, the Vietnamese people would they would sell their fish to one another. So we got a bright idea. Well, let's catch some fish, and we would sell them, sell the fish to the Vietnamese people. You know, five dollars, you know, for every carp that we caught. And so, you know, there, there were so many different things in the time that I was there in eighteen years that that we've done. Um, the the families were very, they were very caring. 